Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some great games for game night. So today I'm doing a first impressions video for Methodology, The Murder on the Links, and I'm going to tell you five things about it to help you deduce if this is the right game for you. Murder. And it's up to you to solve the mystery. Interrogate your friends. J'accuse, one of you has to have the murder item. And use your deductive skills to unearth the location, the weapon, and the killer. <gasps> while also keeping your cards to your chest to become the winner. Do you think you have what it takes? Thing one, what's this game all about? So Methodology The Murder on the Links is a social deduction game in which you're trying to figure out who done it. And the game is basically set um, around an Agatha Christie novel, The Murder on the Links, and there are people and places and things from the book in the game, or so I'm led to believe. Um, the theme here, however, is entirely underutilised. Um, I was disappointed to learn that um, when I opened the game up that there was no description of what was really going on in the rule book. I couldn't quite tell if we were solving a murder or we were trying to get away with a murder. I might still be uncertain on that fact. But also that, that I didn't know if we were detectives or not. I kind of assumed we might be or that you might get to play as Poirot um, trying to solve a case. But he's just kind of a passerby in the game, another kind of named character. So. There's nothing here to really engage with theme wise. It's all just here's some stuff from Magatha Christie, um, but you don't really get to be part of it. And that was a big letdown for me and for other people who played the game with me as well. We wanted to kind of, you know, all take part in this kind of cool idea um, and setting a theme. Now, similar games to this, um, I suppose the first thing that comes to mind is something like Sheriff of Nottingham, where you have to kind of bluff and deceive others to kind of progress in the game. But methodology has a kind of a memory element added in as well to set it apart from others. Thing two, what type of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So while Methodology is a social deduction game, it really is a game about card management as well. Um, and the important thing about the cards is that they represent things that are happening in the game. So they are persons, places and objects. Um, and they all have kind of different colour coded categories within themselves as well. And what you're trying to do is by the end of the game have basically a, a, a murder weapon, a place where you did it and somebody who did it left in your hand. Um, and you want to keep this secret from everybody else. You're trying to make it so that, you know, no one else guesses um, the answers that you had. Um, so on your turn, you're going to play two cards down. And depending on each kind of section of or type of cards they belong to, the person with the highest number on them will get to ask a question of somebody else. And you get to ask about what's in their hand. Um, and you can choose to lie um, or tell the truth. And if you lie, however, and you're caught out, you'll lose a card from your hand, which is important for the end of the game because you need as many cards in hand as possible. Um, so you play with cards until you run out of them. Um, the important part is when a card is used, there are game boards in play that list all of the available cards. So it helps you with the deduction by you know placing out used cards. You know exactly what's out there still, um, and while you try and guess what's in everyone else's hand. So at the end of the game, you're trying to conceal what you have and hope no one guesses what's in there, but you also have to try and guess what's in everyone else's hand. And you can have a good idea of this from showing what cards they might have played earlier or what kind of um, answers they might have given to the questions. Um, so that's really it in a nutshell. Um, I don't know this like it's a maybe the bluffing mechanic just isn't for me maybe that's more for your group but this game felt like it was lacking a little something in how it was put together but it was very close to something kind of cool. Thing three on the table. So yeah this one has quite a bit of table presence for what's essentially a small enough game um, and that's due to the fact that it's got these large boards for placing out the used cards onto to help you deduce who the murderer is um, and these are 
bold and bright and colourful and have all of the art from the game displayed on them. So they look really good. But it, yeah, it does take up quite a bit of space. Um, for three of us, it took about 30 to 40 minutes to play. Um, and the rulebook did get us there, but I have a few kind of minor questions I would like to have known, but I don't think it really affected gameplay all that much. Now, replayability wise, well, the, you know, the, the case doesn't change um, at all, but of course, you know, what cards you have and who keeps what does. So this is really a game about playing against players rather than against the game. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, there's no doubt at all, this is a very, very good looking game. Like the box art from the start tells you everything you need to know about this. It looks like fun, detective, you know, we're going to solve a crime, that kind of feeling. Um, and it definitely kind of delivers on that front. Um, but not only that, inside the box, you have some beautiful artwork on the cards. I really love the illustration style. It's super pretty. Um, the choice of colours and all were great. Um, I do find, though, that the colours on the cards sometimes were difficult to tell apart. And this was more pronounced for somebody with colour blindness. I think an, an icon might have gone a long way here. Um, but everything in this game is beautifully produced. There are beautiful cards, there are beautiful boards. It's all incredibly lovely. Um, this is a game that looks lovely on the table and lovely on your shelf. It, yeah, it's a good looking thing. Thing five, is this game actually any good? I'm going to be honest here and the first word that comes to mind is almost. Um, this game really has kind of a lot going for it. It's got a, a cool theme, uh, a great idea, um, you know, it's stuff we're familiar with and when you've got someone like Perot on the cover of your box and you're getting ready to go in and solve a murder or solve a mystery, um, there's an expectation there of what this game is going to be about and I don't feel like it delivers it. Um, it's got this brilliant theme and cool idea and then reduces it to like a hidden set collection game. Um, and no, I was disappointed there wasn't more to this and my players were disappointed that we didn't get to do something cool. Like I'm not even still sure if we were solving a murder or not because it doesn't even say that in the rule book I had to infer this um I've not read the book um so I didn't know what had happened or these place names meant nothing kind of to me I just I wish this had gone further I wish there'd be more I wish we got to engage with it more than we actually did um my second issue I suppose is the mechanics and um this just didn't sit right with me and it's very possible I'm just not a big bluffing game kind of person but the stakes just didn't seem kind of high enough um, for people to want to try and bluff because when you do bluff you'll lose a card from your hand and if you well that's assuming you're caught out if you bluff successfully you just get to keep the card and nobody knows what it is and while it's definitely important to keep your cards secret because the only the ones you kept secret score points at the end of the game um the, it's kind of easy to figure out what's in everyone's hand because there are these big boards that you put your cards out on as the game progresses. So there is a certain only a certain number of cards left in the pool that are clearly in people's hands. And based on what you've played kind of earlier or, or shown earlier, it wasn't that difficult to figure out what was in people's hands. Um, so on the one sense it was almost too easy to figure out what people were up to um but also like it got to the point where people didn't really care what was in everyone's hands at the end either um it just yeah it just dragged a lot um i don't think this interrogation style thing they were going for really panned out but that might just be my group of players um, the truth is, I suppose I can see groups that might really like this. Um, you know, I think if you're into that kind of, I don't know what you've got, I'm going to try and pretend I got something else, then you probably should be checking this out. Um, but for me, I just, I didn't have a good time with it. And this is a first impression of the video simply because I couldn't get people to play this with me a second time. Um, so I don't know what that says or not. But um, I do think there's a lot of potential here and I do think it's a very good looking game. So yeah, check it out if it sounds like it might be up your street. Do I think you should have methodology, the murder on the links, in your collection? Well, to be honest, there's no mystery how I feel about it, but if how I've explained it has at least piqued your interest, then I think this is a game you owe it to yourself to check out. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Please like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you have any comments or queries to make about methodology, the murder on the links, why not shout them off in the comment box below? I'd love to hear from you. So tune in again next time for some more short and hopefully informative board game reviews.